Hi everyone, it's Helen here again with a plan with me video and today I'll be talking through how I approach my standard weekly layout in the Passion Planner. So if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, go ahead and use the link in my description to get a Passion Planner of your very own. With that, let's just get started. Just to start out with going over what I'll be using this week, the main I guess attraction of my layout will be these adorable cat stickers that my boyfriend got for me from Taiwan. I love that they're somehow both adorable and classy at the same time, so I'll be aiming for a style that sort of complements that entire tone of like cute but also cool. I'll also be using this neutral colored kind of Japanese inspired washi tape that I got from Amazon to complement the neutral color of the cat stickers. I'm also using my super trusty Crayola Super Tip markers, which I highly recommend for their wide range of color and affordability. Another one of my planner necessities I'll be using are my black Muji ballpoint pens. While I usually use both sizes, I've been gravitating more to the 0.38 just because I've switched to the smaller passion planner. Next, I'll be using my Tombow Fudenosuke brush pens just to do a little more classier calligraphy in my spread, and I'll be using the soft tip today, which is in the black casing. So that's the majority of the tools I'll be using, and with that, let's start planning. Woohoo! Okay, so I always start out my planning by putting washi tape down just because I tend to overwrite rather than underwrite and so setting those boundaries of knowing like which hour that I'm actually allowed to write at just really helps me. Um, here you can just see me high key struggling to make the tape like line up with the lines until I finally just like give up and scoot it closer to me. Um, this is because like my camera setup is super jank, literally my, my phone was sitting on top of a ramen box that was being held up by a stool as well as my Settlers of Catan board game set. Uh, I'll just see if I can insert a picture here, but yeah, like that's what I, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I'm also cutting the washi tape with a kitchen knife. This is just like a kitchen knife that I've always used and I'm always too lazy to buy one of those like $2 cutters on Amazon, which is why I'm just waving a knife around as I cut up my washi tape. But yeah, all weird and maybe slightly terrifying knife jokes aside, I am a huge washi tape user. I have a whole box of them in my drawer that maybe I'll reveal to like the public someday. Um, but I love them because it's a great way to sort of make your pages pop, to add a little bit of color without having to excessively use markers or stickers, which can get a little tiresome. And since I already spend so much time planning, I know that if I use markers or stickers as opposed to like a single strip of washi, it would just take a lot of time. I also like that it covers the first few hours of the day because I am usually not awake at 6 a.m. and therefore that part of my planner sometimes might just be blank and so why not just cover it with some cute tape. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my clear ruler as well as my 0.38 Muji ballpoint pen and just block out my class schedule. Because I am a college student, my class schedule tends to be a little more sporadic than like say high school or maybe even work, but I am like learning and being a student full time. So my life just tends to revolve around my class schedule and therefore I consider it most important to pen this down first before anything else. So what I'm doing is lining up my ruler against the hourly horizontal lines and making sure that it matches up with my school schedule on my Google Calendar before going over it several times with my 0.38 Muji ballpoint pen and then connecting those two lines with a vertical line as well. Um, unfortunately, literally like 24 hours after filming this video, my class schedule actually changed. I like dropped a class because I decided it wasn't going to be very helpful in terms of graduation requirements and like my time in general. And so my schedule doesn't look super different, but definitely it looks like I have a lot more class than I actually do. Um, just as like a, I guess, heads up or like warning. I'm actually not that great of a student. I am that stereotypical second semester senior who just like drops classes because she gets super bored after the first lecture. Yeah, that's me now. And don't get me wrong, I am that person who sometimes gets super annoyed when my passion planner doesn't totally match up with what my actual schedule is like, but obviously that didn't happen here because I actually filmed this pretty early in the week 
before I even considered the fact that my schedule might change just because I wanted to get it done filming so that I could start editing it. But yeah, so if you look on my Instagram, this spread probably won't look exactly the same. That's fine. We're all growing here. It's chilling. You do you, Helen. It's fine. Yeah. First person validation, third person validation. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, all weird self-deprecating jokes aside, um, those reasons are precisely why I recommend that everyone have both a digital planner and like a physical planner as well. I use Google Calendar, I know some people who use Apple Calendar, and others might use some like external app or software. Um, things change, people drop classes, you schedule dinner with friends last minute, and sometimes you just need a way to keep track of those things without having to worry about making sure your lines are exactly straight in your planner. And that's why I keep a Google Calendar. What I do is I keep a Google Calendar for the entire week and for the upcoming weeks as well, and then maybe every Thursday or Friday or even Wednesday in this case. I was doing this in Wednesday. Um, I take a look at my upcoming week and that's when I fill in my passion planner ahead of time. Um, that way passion planning sort of becomes me time as well because then I can add my own creative element without having to worry about things like my schedule changing or not knowing what's going to happen ahead of time and things like that. And yes, it's true, I am that whack job who takes personal enjoyment out of filling out my planner. It's very strange. I don't know why drawing these extremely straight lines and adding washi tapes and seeing how hectic my schedule actually is on paper gives me so much joy at the end of every week, but I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a creative person but also someone who highly values efficiency and productivity, which is why I'm always telling people to like, hey, try out planning. But if adding washi tape and making things perfectly straight and I guess just making sure everything's perfect in general gives you a lot of anxiety. Don't do that. Planning on a passion planner is not supposed to make you feel even more anxious about your life. It's supposed to make you feel like you have it put together regardless of whether or not that's actually true. And therefore, if watching this video or like doing these things makes you feel hella stressed, don't do it. Just highlight things, write things down with like a freaking graphite pencil and call it a day if that's what does it for you. I just like doing this because it's a way for me to be creative and productive at the same time. But yes, back to the video, I am now using this khaki-ish brownish color to create some fake drop shadows around the boxes that I just drew. I like how it creates this sort of fake 3D effect using color and I like how the khaki color also sort of brings together that whole neutral look that I've been going for throughout the entire video. And like I said, this marker is from the 50 pack of Crayola Super Tips. I highly recommend them to any planner regardless of whether or not you're just starting out or if you've been doing it for years and years and years on end. And it's because they are so affordable, I believe the 50 pack is less than $10, but they last so freaking long. Like, I had one pack that probably lasted me around six years, and it still had a lot of marker juice left in it, but the only reason why I replaced it was because the nubs were literally falling apart, because this was back when I liked to color with them, and so I would like destroy the tips and they weren't exactly fine tip markers anymore, but they still had so much ink in them. And that was six years, guys. This could probably last you a decade if you use it sparingly and don't crush the tips super hard like I did in high school. Wow, that took a long time, but it's okay because now I am finally done with penning in all my classes and I am going to start with some other things that I have going on in the week. So what I'm going to do is take this gray pen also from the Super Tips pack and pen down my volunteer hours for peer advising. Um, I'm using this sort of like bubbly cursive-ish font. And for those of you who are asking how to get better at penmanship, first of all, I am not a calligrapher by any shot, but I highly recommend looking into Pinterest templates and also just watching YouTube tutorials. That's honestly how I have sort of shammed my way into lettering different things into my passion planner. Next, I'm going to take my Tombow Furunosuke brush pen. Here I'm using the soft tip, which is in like the black casing and I'm just going to letter in the different extracurricular activities that I have for the rest of the week. 
Again, I am in no way a calligraphy expert. I barely dabble. Um, I just use these because I've heard that they are the best beginner brush pens for people to have. And I like using the soft tip because, like I said, my fingers are not the most dexterous. They're not the most practiced in terms of calligraphy and lettering and so therefore that soft tip just really enables me to get those light and thinner lines without having to control my hands too much because as I said I do not have that control necessarily. Next I'm going to be taking my straight edge again as well as that same Muji ballpoint pen and I'm going to be doing something a little different from what you might see in other people's passion planner layouts. By drawing horizontal lines across the uppermost part of my hourly time slots, I'm going to create a little bar that says reading. Underneath this bar, I'm going to write a different Bible reading that I'm going to be doing that morning. Um, I like doing this just because it sort of creates a habit for myself. I know that if I didn't have it in my planner to keep me accountable, I would not feel as guilty about skipping my Bible readings in the morning and skipping my QTs, and therefore it's just something that I like to include in my planner just to keep me motivated and accountable to doing things right. Um, I didn't end up actually writing my Bible verses in here during this planner session just because honestly my Bible was in my backpack and I was too lazy to walk two feet and get it out, but rest assured I wrote them in a few days later when the week was coming a little closer. Next, I'm going to take that Fudenosuke brush pen again and write the word meal over where you would usually put your personal to-do list. Because I am a student, my to-do lists sort of just all meld together into like a list of me trying to get my life together, so basically all work, and so I find that separating my errands into two lists doesn't really do anything for me, especially since the actual number of errands I have that aren't school related tend to be pretty small, and so therefore I like to convert the at least the first two quadrants of the personal to-do list into my personal meal planner. So the first two lines become the title, Mules, and then I draw a line down the middle of the rest of the lines, which have coincidentally seven rows, and then I write down the days of the week starting from Sunday because this is a Sunday planner, and then those two, that line sort of just designates lunch and dinner, and then I write down what meals I am planning on having. Um, it looks sparse now, but that's just because it's only Wednesday. Obviously, this would get more filled in as I have a better understanding of what my week is going to look like. On the other hand, in my work to-do list, I'm going to write down all my assignments that I have to do for the upcoming week. This is when having that laptop in front of me comes in real handy, especially my Google Calendar because that's when I have all my major assignments written down. So I'm going to write down all my major assignments due, as well as any smaller readings or like maybe I need to catch up on a lecture or something and I'm going to separate them into three different categories. I'm going to separate them into things that are hard due and will actually matter to my grade, um, things that like, yes, have a due date but aren't going to impact my grade that much, and finally things that I just need to catch up on on my own and actually aren't going to impact my grade in that class at all. So for example, catching up on lectures or readings. I put the most important things at the top and then the least important things at the bottom just to give me a visual aid as well. And yeah, this is a great way to help me really be able to see what classes I need to work more on and what larger assignments I have due that I need to invest more time in in the upcoming week. Also, some assignments just happen to like repeat a lot. For example, my cognitive science class meets three times per week, and therefore I have at least two readings per week due at different times in the week. And so therefore to designate that, I just draw a little dash through the little box next to the errand so that I know that this needs to be completed twice in the week. Next to each errand, I also write down the day that it is due. So for example, if I need to finish a reading by Tuesday, then I'll write in parentheses T. Next, it's finally time for my favorite part, adding the stickers. As you can see, I really take advantage of the fact that these stickers are on a plastic and transparent sheet by first like t sort of testing them on the page before actually committing to putting them onto the paper itself. I don't know about you guys, but like I am deeply fearful of the permanence of stickers, especially really cute ones like these. I feel like once I put them on the paper, there is no turning back. I have to like own up to my mistakes, regardless of the fact 
that like it's just a piece of paper with some sticky backing on it and so therefore I like to test out stickers a lot which is why having that transparent backing really helps in situations like these. To me it's really important to be strategic about where I put stickers because they're so permanent. Um, I try and put them at the beginning of the day or on any white space I see just because I don't want them to end up blocking anything that I might pencil in in the upcoming week. Another thing to note is that while a lot of these stickers were really cute, some of them did have very bright colors that didn't really go with the neutral sort of khaki-ish tones that I'd been aiming for with the washi tape and the colors that I've been using so far. And so I tried to go for cats that were more grayish or orangish or brownish. Another thing that I just love about this pack is that it's got some great stickers that just show how liquidy and like floppy cats are. Because of that, I really liked looking for the cats that sort of just look like they're lying on top of the layout, especially the ones that are like flopping over the sides of the boxes or stretching on top of like the dark lines. I feel like it adds a lot of life to plant this planner, which can sometimes seem a little stoic and emotionless, let's be honest. But yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but adding the stickers are my favorite part of the Passion Planner experience. I feel like it's super fun and it takes like two brain cells at most, which is great because I only have two brain cells. So that's why I always save it for the end. Besides the fact that it's really practical to have everything important, or I guess quote unquote important, down on paper first, it's also just a great reward to say like, oh, you're finally done with planning. You finally finished all the logistical things. So now just put like some dumb cats in dumb poses on like the friggin' paper and call it a day, Helen. But obviously, stickers are very expensive, especially the ones that, like these that are really nice. I'm really lucky where I have a lot of friends who buy them for me, and I have the monetary like ability to buy them myself when I am feeling inclined to. But please don't feel like you need to buy a bunch of sticker packs in order to have fun while passion planning. This is also a great time where you can just break out those under $10 super tip markers and doodle whatever you want in the margins because you just finished planning like your entire schedule out, so go ahead and give yourself a break. And yeah, even though there's a lot of blank spaces, that's what my layout usually looks like after a big planning session. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first plan with me video that I've made. Here's a few close-up shots of the layout that we just watched. And yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. Um, everything I used in this week's plan with me is in the description box below. And I hope you guys have a great week filled with lots of love and lots of cats. Thanks, this is Helen, and goodbye.